yes good morning students so we had started the chapter the third level so we had done its first part like uh, where the narrator uh, he tells the psychiatrist the one who was his friend also that he had visited the third level at grand central station the fact is that the station doesn't have any third level but the narrator claims that he has visited this place the psychiatrist gives the notion that uh, maybe the narrator felt like this because he uh, he was quite fed up of this life which is full of stress worries and fears so maybe because of these uh, disappointments he had an escapist attitude and he escaped and he escaped to the third level which is not there so maybe it was just his figment of imagination and uh, the narrator when the narrator doesn't you know agree to it the his friends and even the psychiatrist tells him that uh, his even habit or if uh, his hobby of collecting stamps is a proof that he has an escapist attitude so the people those who collect stamps uh, they live somewhere in the past and to this the narrator had a uh, you know a argument in his favor he says that if he had uh, uh, you know the stress and worries in this century which is quite which is an uh, which is the you know which is an era of uh, machines an era of you know modern times then what about his grandfather who in uh, in the past used to collect stamps in the past the things were not that fast there was not so much of stress the life was quite at ease if his grandfather used to collect stamps in that times then uh, then it means that uh, this uh, idea that the person who collects stamps lives in the past holds no relevance right so the narrator is able to convince his friend that the third level is there and his and his experience or his visit to the third level uh, was uh, was a reality right so we were here on the second page or third let's see so we were talking here narrator you know on page number 2 the narrator he was going to tell us like uh, Uh, how did he happen to land in third in the third level okay so where that third level was and how did he reach there this is what exactly we will read right now page number 2 and this last paragraph i turned into grand central from vanderbilt avenue and went down the steps to the first level where you take trains like the 20th century so at first level you take trains like 20th century then i walked down another flight to the second level where the sub urban trains leave from ducked into an arched doorway heading for the subway and got lost so it is from here where you know uh, you go to the third, second level from there you get the sub urban trains ducked into an arched doorway heading for the subway and got lost so that's easy to do i have been in and out of grand central hundreds of time but i am always bumping into new doorways and stairs and corridors so at the second level you know at second uh, level of the grand central station uh, there is an arched doorway from where you get often lost and narrator says that it was not that for the first time that he had been uh, that he was lost at uh, uh, grand central station earlier also he got hundreds of times he got lost and he was able to find new doorways and stairs and door corridors once i got into a tunnel about a mile long and came out into a lobby of roosevelt hotel another time i came up in an office building on 46th street 3 blocks away so if you are asked like uh, how can you say that narrator uh, used to have these kinds of experiences earlier also then here is the proof with us that earlier also he had these kinds of experiences where he would land into uh, imaginary places or you can say he would land into different places if not imaginary so how could he be uh, you know uh, reaching the roosevelt hotel from the grand central station so he got into a tunnel about a mile long and came out in the lobby of roosevelt hotel 
so another time i came up in an office building on 46th street three blocks away so sometimes i think grand central is growing like a tree pushing out new corridors and staircases like roots is it possible that some place grows like a tree or something which has new corridors new staircases like roots it is it doesn't happen but if it was happening with a the narrator then of course it was his mind which was making him imagine these kinds of things but even then let's see what happens there is probably a long tunnel that nobody knows about knows about uh feeling its way under the city right now so there is probably a long tunnel that nobody knows about feeling its way under the city right now on its way to times square and maybe another to central park so narrator says that there is a tunnel and no one knows about it and that tunnel takes one to uh, somebody you can sometimes you can reach times square or you can reach the central park and maybe because for so many people through the years grand central has been an exit a way to escape maybe that's how the tunnel i got into but i never told my secretary's friend about that idea so he says that uh, this tunnel uh, these kinds of, this kind of thing like the tunnel is there and uh, so in a way grand central has been a source of escapism for many of the people for the many years but narrator says that he has never told this kind of thing to his secretary's friend so what he has not told his secretary's friend he has not told his experience that he had been able to uh, get lost through the tunnel to the times square or at the central park or at uh, you know at or at roosevelt hotel and all so he doesn't tell all these things to the secretary's friend he has only told him about his experience at the third level got it the corridor was in uh, was in the corridor i was in began angling left and slanting downward and i thought that was wrong but i kept on walking all i could hear was the empty sound of my own footsteps and i didn't pass and i didn't pass a soul here is a proof that uh, where this narrator was that might have been his imagination so when he was uh, reaching the third level uh, then the corridor which he you know started the corridor i was in so the corridor from where he was going that was moving left and slanting downwards and uh, first he thought like maybe he was going the wrong way but uh, he kept on walking so he could only hear his own footsteps no one else he was able to see there so then i heard that sort of hollow roar ahead that means open space and people talking and finally he was able to listen some hollow roar so that was the meaning that that meant that there was an open space and people were there the tunnel turned sharp left i went down a short flight of stairs and came out on the third level at grand central station so finally he reached the grand central stations third level so very important here like this is what the chapter is all about what this third level is and why is third level so prominently talked about what is strange about it let's see so what strange things you will be reading in this third level that will make you understand like why is narrator uh, why this experience is special to him and why does the secretary say that narrator had an escapist attitude let's see now the tunnel turned sharp left i went down a short flight of stairs and came out on the third level at grand central station for just a moment i thought i was back on the second level but i saw the room was smaller there were fewer ticket windows and train gates and the information booth in the center was good and old looking so earlier initially he thought like maybe he was at the second level but there were there were some things there were a few things which were quite different so which different things were there number 1 the different thing which he saw was that the room was smaller then there were fewer ticket windows and ticket gates and in were information booth was made up of wood and it was an old fashioned kinds and the man in the booth wore a green eye shade and long black sleeve protractors so uh, so the man in the booth he was wearing green eye shades he was green, wearing green goggles 
and uh, long black sleeve protectors. So these kinds of things people in the contemporary times did not wear. The lights were dim and sort of flickering. So the lights, they were dim and sort of flickering. Then I saw why they were open flame gas lights. So you people were, might also be knowing that uh, before the advent of electricity, we, we used to have the gas lights. And the gas lights you, you, you know, would you know flicker. They would not like uh, illumine like the bulbs which we have right now. So then when he saw that the lights were flickering and when he uh, observed them very minutely, he, he was able to make out like those were not the electric bulbs. They were actually the, uh, uh, they were actually open flame gas lights. There were brass spittoons on the floor and across the station, a glint of light caught my eye. A man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket. So children, we are all reading about like what different things were there at the third level. So then there were grass spittoons, the spittoons in which you can spit. And then there were, you know, there was a glint of light which caught his eye. Finally, a man who was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket. So nowadays, uh, if we find somebody having a, a you know, pocket watch, uh, looks very strange. Nowadays, people have uh, the wrist watches and the kinds of watches which are there now. They might not have been there in the past about hundreds of years ago. So the, there are, you know, each, each era has a signature style. Okay, right now, what is uh, the things which are prominently uh, there in this era? Now, the, somebody holding a mobile in hand is not something very strange. But if a person comes from, uh, comes the one who was there 100 years ago in this, you know, world, if he comes all of a sudden on this land now, for that person, somebody who is holding, who will be holding a mobile would be a very, very awkward sight. So similarly, for a person who is living right now, for him, uh, the sight of a person uh, using a pocket watch would be very, very strange. And that could also be an indication that it's not the present time. So the man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket. He snapped open the cover, glanced at his watch and frowned. He wore a derby hat, a black four button suit with tiny lapels, and he had a big black handlebar mustache. So all these kinds of things, the way he was dressed up, so that was all old fashioned. Then I looked around and saw that everyone in the station was dressed like 1890 something. So he was able to make out like all people were, were not uh, uh, dressed up the way he was dressed up. In the very beginning, he told us that he was wearing uh, the gabardine suit and all. So now here, these people were wearing altogether a different dress. So that meant that these people were of 18th or 19th, 1890 sometimes. I never saw so many beards, sideburns and fancy mustaches in my life. Right? Nowadays, we don't find uh, strange kinds of beards. Okay? There are like prominent styles of beards are there. For example, Dhoni has, uh, what we say, Koli has a different kind of beard. So th the things which are very prominent for uh, us to see, we are able to relate it with the times. Isn't it the kinds of pistachios now we see or the kinds of pistachios people used to have about hundreds of years ago, the styles keep on changing. So he says like, I never saw so many beards, sideburns and fancy mustaches in my life. A woman walked in through the train gate. She wore a dress with a leg of mutton sleeves and skirts to the top of her high buttoned shoes. So the kind of dress this woman was wearing that was also not as per the modern day. So I caught a glimpse of a locomotive, a very small career, uh, an Alps locomotive with a funnel shaped stack. And then I knew. So then I knew means then I knew that I was not in the present. Then I knew that I was in 1890s and all. So all this paragraph children was about what different things he saw and observed in that third level. That's how he was able to make out like he was in the third level, not in first or second. So you have to remember all these things. Okay. So then because uh, when MCQs come, then for MCQs, you need to know the minutest things. Okay. Okay. So to make sure I walked over to a newsboy 
to make sure what did you want to be what did you want to be make sure of this is a question let's read the line to make sure i walked over to a newsboy and glanced at the stack of papers at his feet so he reached a newsboy and he saw that he had some papers the world the world hasn't been published for years so what kind of newspaper there was it was the world and this newspaper had not been published for over for years the lead story said something about president cleveland and i have found that front page since in the public library files and it was printed june 11 1894 so the newspaper which he saw there it was of 11th june 1894 so now he was sure that he was not in present he was in 1894 and the date on which he the date when he found himself there it was 11th or 12th june because the newspapers are of the previous date i turned toward the ticket windows knowing that here on the third level at grand central i could buy tickets that would take uh, louisa and me anywhere in the united states we wanted to go so then when he realized that he was in 1894 he went to the he went towards the ticket window and uh, from there he wanted to buy tickets to go to uh, galesburg or illinois or america because he wanted to go there with his wife because he always wanted to go there so here also is a proof that uh, uh, when he found himself in the third level it's not that he immediately tried to come back from third level he wanted to stay there see this so he wanted to take tickets to galesburg illinois in the year 1894 and i wanted two tickets to galesburg illinois why two tickets one for himself and one for his wife so have you ever been there it's a wonderful town still with big old frame houses huge lawns and tremendous trees whose branches meet overhead and roof of the streets so he says like have you ever uh, been there narrator is asking us and he says like still the scalesburg is a very beautiful place with all that you know natural beauty around and in 1894 summer evenings were twice as long and people sat out on their lawns the men smoking cigars and talking quietly the women waving palm leaf fans and the fireflies all around in a peaceful world so why does he want to go to the third level why does he want to visit galesburg illinois because then in 1894 the times were quite beautiful it was quite a peaceful environment then people could sit uh, out of their houses could sm uh, could smoke for long hours could you know sit out on the lawns and they would you know talk quietly and even women would you know wave with their palm leaf fan, fan, fans then the people would not sit inside with the air conditioned rooms and all then women even would sit outside in the lawns with the uh, palm leaf fans in their hands and the fireflies would be all around and it was such a peaceful time then to be back there with the first world war still 20 years off and world war 2 over 40 years in the future i wanted two tickets for that so now the narrator wanted the tickets for that world when the world war was 20 years away and the second world war was about 40 years away means yet there was no sign of any world war so he wanted to go and live there so here what is the signal what's he like sign what's he like hint to us like the narrator wanted to be there where there was no fear of war where there was no tension no stress of the modern mechanized life the life he wants to be there where there was simple life simple and peaceful life now the life has become complicated the now the life has become luxurious but the life the these luxuries have made our life become quite complicated okay and this narrator wanted to go away from this world the clerk figured the fair he glanced at my, my fancy hat band but but he figured the fair and i had enough for two coach tickets one way 
but when i counted out the money and looked up the clerk was staring at me he nodded at the bills that that ain't money mister he said and if you're trying to skin me you will get you won't get very far and if and he glanced at the cash drawer beside him as of course the money was old style bills half again as big as the money we use nowadays and different looking i turned away and got out fast there is nothing nice about jail even in 1894 so the narrator you know he went to the ticket window to find to get tickets to illinois got it so his idea was at first he would get the tickets then he would come to his house from there he would get his wife and from there they would go for galesburg but what happened when he went in to buy the tickets the moment that a ticket uh, officer person you know uh, the clerk first he uh, you know counted he figured out the fare he told him like this much you have to pay for me so when the narrator was taking money and counting then when he saw the currency in his hand he shouted at him like don't try to befool me don't try to cheat me because you can be sent to jail actually what had happened that the narrator had the uh, modern currency whereas the clerk who he belonged to 1894s so then the currency was absolutely different so that person did not know like what this was happening so he threatened him that he would send him to jail if he tried to cheat him and it would have happened had narrator been there for some more time then he might have been arrested for uh, for any fraud okay so if somebody comes if somebody goes to the bank or if somebody shows the fake currency then what happens the person having fake currency in hand is immediately arrested isn't it or that person is reported to the police this is what had happened then though the narrator had the right currency but even then he could not explain these things to the people of 1894 so he went off he ran away from that place because he knew that even if it he was in 1894 jail it would be equally disastrous so and that was that i left the same way i came i suppose he says that the pra- uh, the place or the uh, that very you know corridor from where he had come from there he went off next day during lunch hour i drew 300 dollars out of my bank nearly all we had and bought old style currency that really uh, worried my psychiatrist friend you can buy old money at almost any coin uh, any coin dealers but you have to pay a premium my 300 dollars bought less than 200 uh, in old style bills but i didn't care eggs were 13 cents a dozen in 1894 so very important inf- information in this paragraph so when the narrator uh, was afraid that he might be arrested he left that station and came to the present got it and the moment he came to present the first thing he did was that he went to the bank and got 300 dollars he withdrew 300 dollars and that was all he had and then he went to the coins uh, some coin dealer from there he got the old currency which might he which he might need in 1894s so he but he says like in order to get in, if you want old currency then you have to pay the pay a premium so paying a premium means you have to pay an extra cash uh, so that you can get the old currency so in lieu of th- 300 dollars he got 200 in old styles but he was not worried because he thought like in 1894 the things were quite cheaper the things were not that uh, in that much of inflation was not there eggs were only 13 cents a dozen if you want want uh, a dozen eggs in 1894 you have to pay only 13 cents so 200 dollars would be more than sufficient if he wanted to settle in 1894 so but i have never again found the corridor that leads to the third level at the grand central station although i have tried often enough but now what was the problem the narrator was not able to find the third level again though he tried it out many a times luisa was pretty worried when i told her all this uh, and didn't want me to look for the third level anymore 
and after a while i stopped so after some time narrator stopped searching third level his wife also told him not to go for that kind of search um i went back to my stamps i went back to my stamps means that he again continued his habit of he resumed his habit of collecting stamps but now we were both looking uh, but now we were we are both looking every weekend because now we have proof that the third level is still there and now what's the difference now the time elapsed so there is some time gap now in between uh, you know he stopped looking for third level but he kept on going for the stamp collection and during this time something happened he says that now we both who both including his wife the one who told him earlier not to search third level now she was also with him now he says that we have again started searching third level let's see what happens my friend sam bainer disappeared so what happened during this time his friend sam bainer disappeared who is sam sam is a psychiatrist the psychiatrist disappeared nobody knew where but i sort of suspected uh, because sam's a city boy and i used to tell him about the galesburg i went to school there and he always said he liked and the sound of the place and that's where he is all right in 1894 so gales so where is sam he is in 1894 because one night fussing with my stamp collection i found well do you know what a first day cover is so now what happens like how did he come to know that sam has gone to the third level so this is very important information children this last page will do tomorrow okay you people revise this much of chapter today even if i be i'll try to read out i won't be able to finish up the chapter so tomorrow we'll continue from the last paragraph of page 5 right okay any doubt from here whatever we have read you can ask any doubt yes any doubt beta no any doubt okay if you don't have any doubt tomorrow i'll ask you the questions first then we'll continue okay so charanjit send me the screenshot beta of attendance